morning, everyone. It seems, yeah, we have already passed 21 hours. And here we are. A uh, conversation from, I bring my guest from China. And hopefully she's already here, Linda, uh, Linda Tan. Hi, Linda. Hi. 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 Hi nice to meet you here. Um, Thanks for having me. And thanks for joining us to give a perspective also from the Chinese context. And mm -hmm. basically, I have been fascinated by their work for years. And I mm -hmm. know they are kind of a design consultant, a little bit special compared with, the, let's say, the traditional one. So I will first leave the floor to Linda to make a very short or brief self introduction about yourself and about the Maker Point. Okay, thanks, Che. Uh, I'm really happy to, to be here. My name is Linda, and I actually have my background in, in the life sciences, but now I'm a design consultant. And um, our agency is very small. We have 19 people. Uh, it's a China-based agency, and we focus on uh, providing design solutions that maximizes social impact. So we work with uh, mainly big companies, but we also work with the government and some nonprofit organizations, and we help them basically make their products, um, other services, other programs, um, more socially conscious or, or serve a, more of a social purpose. Nice. So if you want to talk a little bit more about since you are dealing with different kinds of social problems in China, uh, have you done some special projects due to the outbreak of the COVID or especially in this period we are talking about the uncertainty about the future or which kind of future we are facing, how we can change behavior, if you can share some stories that you are dealing with or you had some um, new experience to share with us. Right. So um, in the beginning of the outbreak, we were really confused because everything was happening so fast and changing so fast around us. And we actually, in the very beginning, couldn't insert ourselves into the, the frenzy that was going on. We didn't know what we, we could do um, until about three, four months into the pandemic. We got our first project that has something to do with the pandemic, which was um, community uh, hand washing was the issue and it was um, a nonprofit and they, um, before the pandemic, what they did was uh, help mothers, women in the community to um, hold educational programs for their children, for the children in the community and the adults, com the community at large. And uh, since the pandemic, they became interested in the issue of hand washing because they realized that the government has um, these promotional programs for people to, you know, wash your hands more often and wash it, you know, better 20 seconds, whatever. But there wasn't any kind of sort of civil um, level um, activities. And they felt that this is something that we could do in our, in our communities. We could educate our, our children and our, you know, elderlies um, how they should wash their hands. Um, and they came to us and we designed a set of tools for them to, um, hold really fun and gamified um, programs within their communities. And this is this is in the third months of the pandem pandemic, so they could move around in their communities. It could be um, sort of a offline kind of activities. And uh, this made us realize the reason why we couldn't insert ourselves into the pandemic in the very beginning was because we were, we're, not, um, we're not a team that has our strength in responding rapidly to, <laughs> to emergencies because um, we've always worked with what we call slow problems or slow mm -hmm. issues. Those issues that are so complex um, that it takes a long time to sort of push it forward in any direction. And hand washing is one of them because the pandemic can come really quickly and take over your lives. But um, getting everybody to have better hand washing behavior is, is a slow process. And um, one reason why it's slow is because it's never a priority until, until it is. Yeah. Um, so we realized that we were good at problems that were slow, but people kind of don't look at until you, know, you have to look at it. So yeah. hand washing is one of them. And there's another example. So gender issues, um, mm -hmm. you know, people still have these social gender um, ideas between men and women. I mean, it's a big issue. I'm sure, like, glo 
worldwide, but it impacts low income women more. Mm -hmm. um, so before the pandemic, we had this project where we worked with this nonprofit as well. Um, and they, they focused on rural women. So women live in rural areas and we made um, a mini app. So like, a, like an app on your phone um, that allows them to hold these conversations in the villages um, about gender issues that, facing, that they're facing at home. So every day sort of microaggressions or, or you know, uh, times when they felt um, they weren't treated, you know, being treated equally within their families or within, you know, the wider communities. And this, this whole entire tool is just to help them to have a conversation. Yeah. Because the first step is to have a conversation with yourselves and with you know people around you. If you're um, if you feel comfortable enough to do that, maybe in the future you can you can you know organize or you know do something different. Um, so we had that little tool going on, and um, during the pandemic, we realized that um, low skill women that were hit by the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. disproportionately because when their children have to be home, they were sent home to, to you know, study from home. Yeah. Um, it was the moms that had to go home and be with the children. And if you're a white collar mom, it's easier because you work with a computer. But if you're, yeah. you know, a low skilled mother, you work in a factory. So you mm -hmm. can't make that income. You're not doing anything if you're at home. Um, so during that time, a lot of these women, they actually had to quit or they had no income for a really long time. So we realized that, okay, what well, gender is an issue that's you know underlying and it's really big and it affects us you know before the pandemic. Okay. But during the pandemic, it becomes you know more maybe more pronounced and it, it um so it, it made us realize that um it is these sort of underlying issues that are that have always been there um but we don't maybe we don't prioritize for them that we need to prioritize for now because if we, we were going to be prepared better for the next pandemic or next you know public health issue or you know mm -mm. big crisis um then if we we deal with these sort of underlying problems now we might be more resilient the next time and maybe this is something that is um, a strength for our team because we're slow <laughs> and we're not um, we're not afraid to take on these issues that are not priorities for everybody else because they're important that but they're not sense. urgent, yeah. right? So we have to pri prioritize these. Um, this is what the pandemic really uh, made us realize what our, our role is as a team. Yeah, that, these are really, for me, interesting stories and inspiring stories. And I totally agree with you that there are some problems that already existed. But in somehow we can say, thanks to the pandemic, we kind of realize that they're urgent to solve, even though right. it seems like it's not, they, they don't have, the, they didn't have the priority at the beginning. Right. So also here, I think from your story, I'm real. I realize that you are kind of balancing different types of, let's say, uh, requirements. On one side, you said you are kind of a studio that is like working on slow problems or slow social issues that seems that need to solve immediately. But since I'm I'm a Chinese, I know uh, the market needs everything there. They're asking you to solve the problem quickly and give the right and immediate response. I think this kind of uh, conflict that you need to deal every day. And on another side that if I understand right, also your studio is the, really trying to search for or looking for making some positive social impact. But on the, on the other hand, you have to survive. So there's a conflict also between the business part and the social impact part. So in your project, in your daily life as a designer, as a design studio, how are you dealing with these conflicts? Yeah, we actually um, had we've had so many conversations internally <laughs> about. I can this. imagine. <laughs> um, and we're now um, move, we're now four years old as a team. We're mm -hmm. moving on to our fifth year, so uh, the conversation internally also progressed. Uh, you know, 
between the years. And I remember in the in the first year we had a lot of problems getting projects. So we were out there and we're trying to sell ourselves like crazy, but we were not um, getting sort of the the return. Um, and we were really worried because we felt like what what is our market, right? So yeah. Um, and and it's funny thing was the people that are potential clients that we talked to, they were um they were all very supportive in attitude. So they were saying, you know, like I totally agree with you. And yeah, you are the future. <laughs> and, and this is great. Like I I totally think we should do this, but I just I don't know where to find the budget to do yeah. let's say a research project or a um innovation project on you know making the society better because I'm a company. I don't know yeah. where that budget would come from. I guess if if we were able to uh, in the beginning speak to the CEO, it might be a different um picture. Yeah. But you know, we're a young team, so we could only talk to the mid-level sort of managers. Um and we were I remember the end of first year when we were having our, our meeting, we had an internal conversation mm -hmm. um and we realized we didn't understand how big companies worked and how they allocated their budget. So we went back to that and we um, we sort of, you know, analyzed the type of budget that they would already have that we might, you know, be able to compete with other companies yeah. for. Uh, for example, it could be market research. Um, yeah. It could be R&D, right? Or the, you know, user research part of you know, re development, the product development. Um, and in the end, we realized the easiest uh, budget for us to sort of get was mm -hmm. from the C department, so the corporate social responsibility um, department, because that's a department that naturally would, you know, uh, balance the need to balance social impact mm -hmm. and you know our business um, business needs, um, and we realized we had more of a confidence and we have more, you know. <laughs> Uh, expertise <laughs> yeah. to give us confidence to, you know, have a, a give a cold call or a cold email okay. to, you know, department, CSR department and have a sit down, have a coffee with them and and, yeah. and talk to them what to do. But then we realized the CSR department actually doesn't have a huge budget. Um, and sometimes uh, they're very sort of, they just do their own thing. They, they yeah. kind of don't interact that much <laughs> with the, you know, business part of the business. But um, we had a vision back okay. then. We felt like if we could empower the CSR department uh, so that they can take on more of a sort of a um, network leadership role within their corporate and yeah. we can help them talk to, you know, the more functional departments um, about how those departments might be able to change how they practice or how they, you know, develop products. Then we can have, uh, we can sort of, you know, stay with the CSR department, but kind of cover the, the rest of the, the company. And this, um, I mean, it's not it's not just um, our work, but there yeah. is is this change in the world. So we, we work with uh, Meituan, which is a uh, food delivery, yeah. like the internet food delivery. It's like the uh, delivery rule, the international one. Oh, is that, say yeah, that it's like, the Chinese version? Right, say. right. Yeah. Like um, Uber Eats, right? Uber, so, yeah. um, so their CSR department is very interesting. They actually have a committee as a CSR department. And the committee is made from one person from each of the other functional departments. So that's exactly that's what we wanted, <laughs> right? Because yeah. they, they get together and they, they figure out, you know, I, I take care of my um, delivery people and the other person takes care of the client uh, customers. But... Yeah you know, the delivery people and the customers are having conflict and this is affecting their company, affecting user experience, right? Yeah. But why are they having a conflict? Because there's maybe misunderstanding, maybe there's sort of underlying um, uh, I don't know, maybe rudeness against, yeah. you, know, <laughs> the, you know, like uh, service workers. And this is a, a social issue because these service workers, they move from rural places to a big city and they're not really used to how, yeah you know, uh, all these big um, social issues sort of underlying. So we could work with um, these kind of CSR departments or committees and uh, do research and give them little solutions on 
how they can balance sort of user experience, which is what they care about, but mm -hmm. also uh, do it in a way that's more effective because we're we're not um, ignoring the underlying social issues that yeah. are making these user experiences bad, right? So yeah, um, and in this way, we I think the CSR strategy was business wise for us a mm -hmm. good strategy because uh, it made us you know get into the doors of of yeah. um, those big companies. Um, yeah. And also internally, we had this other type of debate that we have all the time. So mm -hmm. how how much of a social impact are we expecting to make with each of, of our, of our um, projects? So yeah. sometimes, sometimes um, it's not the priority of the of the client. It, to them, it's something that's nice imagine. to have, right? Yeah. Uh, if you ask them to um, sort of, you know, you know, pay a lot more, uh, have a, a much higher cost for, let's say, a more a greener package packaging yeah. solution. That's really difficult to sell, right? But even though you know that that's so much better for the environment, yeah. <laughs> it, like you could solve so many problems, but it's not something that uh, that's easy to convince a business, you know, person. Definitely, of, right? So internally, we have sometimes we have to you know, hug each other and, and just kind of um, <laughs> tell each other that we can take this slowly. We can be pragmatic. Even if we can have, we can reduce the packaging material by 10%. Yeah. It's a win, we'll take it because the business is big and 10% yeah. of each, each you know, bottle is, is a lot. Um, a we lot. should um, be happy with that, right? But in the beginning, it might be hard for us, like, psychologically mm -hmm. hard because we know that there's a better solution <laughs> and we, we wow. feel like we blame ourselves for not being able to convince them better we do <laughs> um but later on we just you know be pragmatic because yeah. they, it helps us be more happy with our work and more 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 proud of what we're doing and more have more confidence in it um and also sometimes we disguise ourselves as you know uh, I mean, we read the room and we, we when we walk yeah. into a business meeting, we can tell if the boss, you know, the biggest boss there is, you know, really socially conscious or, or just okay, still getting into it. So we read the room and sometimes we just have to do, disguise ourselves as, you know, an effective, let's say, packaging designer. But yeah. while we're doing it, we're thinking about, we're not forgetting about, you know, okay, well, how do we get a lower carbon footprint? And we yeah. use that as part of the solution, even though it's not a, a requirement that's asked of us from the client or, you know, a pr design principle that they give us, mm, it's, mm, it's mm. ours. And we can just like kind of massage it in. And then as long as the cost is not too big yeah. um, or, or sometimes there isn't, there might not be a cost. There might be, you know, a reduction in cost. Yeah. Um, we'll just put it into <laughs> to the, um, yeah, this, put it into this. the, this is very interesting also maybe this as you said sometimes it's also difficult to define which kind of designer you are what is which is a role as a designer not only about what you are doing but how you communicate right mm -hmm. i think it's still very difficult to define yourself as a social designer in not maybe not only in china but in general they're asking okay so what you are doing as you are mentioning you maybe change the hats depending which context right. or which meeting you are going to have and which kind of conversation you are going to have. Then you need to define yourself, even though you know you are doing the same stuff, but you need to communicate in another, maybe there with other words or with another role. So here I'm quite interesting, interested to know that um, you mentioned a lot of roles and uh, skills that you have used, uh, not only about doing the project, uh, but also communicating the project. So um, if you would like to summarize about the skills that you are doing as more entrepreneur, not only a designer, but mm -hmm. how, how do you consider their essential skills or uh, roles that we have to play? in the future when we don't find a context that we feel 100% food comfortable or we need to somehow adjust a little bit the situation with what we want and what the clients want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think all designers are great at um, finding creative solutions within some kind of a limit. Um, yeah. 
um, and I think as a so social designer, um, I think uh, seeing ourselves more as a scientist um, is very important mm -hmm. because um, social design, when you measure its effectiveness, it can't just be on the sensory you know, experience. No. It has to be, it's something that's really serious and it has, it could be measured with social science tools. Yeah. Right? So it, are these people Definitely. healthier by, because of the thing you did? Did they develop more responsible behavior um, because of something you did? <clears throat> so having this sort of scientific um, mindset or, yeah. or scientific skills, right? Um, is I think it's very important. And also it helps us uh, convince clients um, <laughs> yeah. because you have, right? So this is not my personal, you know, artistic. Definitely preference is it's facts <laughs> um and it's you know it's, it's in social design this is i think facts are more have more strength <laughs> Definitely. Um, and also i think we see ourselves as agenda setters and mm. this is um i think this is boring from maybe uh you know social movements right um so what we do is we we actually um, we write a lot of articles. Well, not a lot, but we we do <laughs> put out articles. And when we we're we're speaking directly to business leaders, uh, yeah. decision makers, and where we're telling them, look, uh, these are the facts, um, these are the trends, and you need to really focus on getting your packaging, <laughs> you know, more environmentally friendly. Yeah. Right. So we have this sort of we we just put out these messages. And we'll try to make them very um, sort of um, not based on anything romantic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just to provide just, them some evidence which can guide them make the decision right, maybe. Right, right. Sometimes really dry stuff, <laughs> yeah. but you know, seriously speaking to them. Um, and we, we choose our agenda. So, yeah. I mean, we talk with people and then we, we discuss internally. We're interested in gender, so we talk about it. Right. Yeah. So this is something yeah. uh, the freedom that we can yeah. have. Yeah. Um, and also also as a connector, I think connecting skills is really important for us because we work uh, on the strategic side more. But on the delivery side, it needs different it depends on our strategy. Mm -hmm. It requires different sort of um, designing tech technicalities. Uh, yeah. So we might need to work with uh, industrial designer. We might need to work with a UX designer, but we might yeah. not have those people. Um, in house, yes. Um, but we have a community. There is a huge <laughs> design community in China and around the world, where you know you have really effective um, designers of all different you know types, and we work yes. with them to realize our, um, our our strategy. And this is really really important. Um, yeah, yeah. So as and, an agenda yeah. setter, as a scientist, as a connector. Yeah, I think this last point as a connector is very very interesting and very very important not only on the contents as you were saying communicate with the user with different types of designer but also how to uh, communicate being connected with the right person inside the company and who can somehow understand the value of this um, proposal or understand the value of your projects yeah and i think we have left around five minutes and um, even though I have a lot of questions that we can take other occasions to discuss. Um, mm -hmm. Well, also last time we mentioned that a lot of students actually, before going to the company, working for a specific big company or on the market, they did a lot of social projects, like they considering the social impact of the design and they are interested on using data to solve the social issues. But unfortunately, even though by now, um, both in Europe, uh, maybe better Europe, American, but in China, I wonder we're still a little bit um, late. Students or new graduates that they cannot find the right place to where they can practice the skills uh, of their um, data practice uh, for the social impact. Mm -hmm. Do you have some tips that how they can really start to putting them into these conversations or even though they are working on the conditional or traditional uh, conventional business mm -hmm. uh, how they can make their practice more um, giving positive social impact maybe mm -hmm. you can give some tips yeah i think just going back to um 
design education. I feel like design education nowadays is really is doing a really good job in um, getting students to understand, you know, the relationship between design and, and social issues. But it's not doing a very good job in helping students understand how to navigate big companies, <laughs> yeah. big systems like that, and like the bureaucracies. And this gives a lot of uh, sort of young designers um, a lot of, you know, setback emotionally because you feel like mm -hmm. you're ready to, you know, <laughs> change the world, but then, you know, people around you might be not, <laughs> not yeah. so ready. Um, so I think, um, right, uh, I, I, I think of this in, in a few ways. I think uh, one thing is, um, I think as a young designer, you just have to keep, you have to keep trying to understand how everything is related or, or connected. Yeah. Um, and the fact that a big company might be rigid, uh, yeah. it might not give you so much room, is there's uh, there are a lot of reasons why it is that way, right? Yeah. Um, and there are a lot of religious relationships in this rigid structure that uh, that's interesting for us to understand. Yeah. Um, and when we understand it, maybe we can, you know, be be more equipped to, to, to yeah, navigate definitely. it or to change it. So to just keep building on the knowledge of how everything is, to understanding how everything's related, how your big rigid company is, mm -hmm. is why is it structured that way? Make it your you know, design research project, your personal one, yeah. um, that really helps. And then secondly, I think uh, as a young designer, you're holding a position that's not so powerful, most likely. Yeah. Um, and your agenda is set by other people, right? You're given your design brief and you, you know, have you don't design the design brief. You don't get to I mean, maybe <laughs> yeah. have so much to say. Um, but you can you can still hold your your own social agenda, right? At any yeah. position. So if you're a UX designer, even though in your design brief nobody told you to um, think of senior users because you know they can't you know, they need bigger characters, whatever. But yeah. you can you can still do it. <laughs> just just do it. <laughs> if that's your thing, just if it doesn't cost anybody else anything, mm -hmm. anything, just just put it in. Um, you don't maybe don't even need to, you know, tell people. <laughs> just yeah. make it more user friendly for some, you know, minorities that you care about. Yeah, That's right. Um, and practice your gift, your skills at that, because one day you're gonna be in the position of power, right? By that yeah. time, you might be an expert in in in, in something. Already. Um, and, okay. and the, my last point is, I re I really agree with the previous um, speaker. I think just um, go light on yourself, right? Uh -huh. So don't take on so much pressure to change yeah. the world uh, <laughs> right away. Uh, yeah. and, and don't be psychologically affected too much if you, you don't. I think make, make mistakes and it's like you throw a ball against a wall. If it bounces back, you know the wall is there. So like yeah. It, yeah. it helps you it helps you understand um how you might navigate it in in the future. Um yeah. so I so think need, it's it's sorry, something so to, mm, go ahead, sorry. go ahead. <laughs> uh, just celebrate your fail your failures, yeah. I think. To yeah. be, you know, mm, that's yeah, it. Yeah, maybe just uh, more patient to build their career or success right. step by step. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think we discussed a lot of issues and yeah, I learned also a lot from you. And let's take other occasions to make more conversation about how we can really make this happen. Yes, definitely. Using design in different ways and in different formats and how we can really make mm -hmm. or have some really practical impact. And thank okay. you very much, Linda. Thank you so much. Hopefully you will have a nice day there.